your sideline source for high school scores. From ABC News, 2020 continues. Once again, Barbara Walters. Attention males, attention females. You need to hear what we're about to tell you because this can happen to anyone. Every year, 50,000 Americans die because they're too squeamish or embarrassed to confront their killer head on. They are victims of colon cancer, but virtually no one needs to die from this disease. Dr. Timothy Johnson with a report that could save your life or the life of someone you love. April 1st, opening day of the baseball season for the Baltimore Orioles. A huge Baltimore welcome for Eric Davis. Outfielder Eric Davis, new to the team, was the very picture of athletic fitness. At age 35, he did not think that his frequent stomach aches were anything to worry about. Eric Davis is touched off a bomb. But just two months into the season, the stomach aches turned into excruciating abdominal pain forcing Eric from the playing field. I knew something was wrong because I've never felt that kind of pain before. Doctors diagnosed the pains as malignant tumors in his large intestine, colon cancer. Even though he was unusually young, Eric Davis developed a cancer that is now the second most common serious cancer in the U.S. And if you are surprised by that fact, you're not alone. There are more colon cancer deaths than there are breast or prostate cancer deaths. And right now, the number of colon cancer deaths are second only to those from lung cancer. So why don't we hear more about it? Well, part of the reason is that the colon, or large intestine, ends in the rectum and anus, parts of the body that a lot of people are embarrassed to have examined and certainly don't want to talk about publicly. In fact, a recent survey revealed that even some doctors avoid discussing it with their patients. Three postcards in from North Bergen. James Smith decided not to wait for his doctor. The 55-year-old asked for a complete checkup, which included screening tests for colon cancer. He was shocked by the results. He said the way things look, between a foot and 18 inches of your colon need to be extracted. James wondered how the cancer could have reached this stage without his having symptoms of any sort. But experts say it happens all the time. Well, it sounds like you've done your homework. Dr. Sidney Winauer is Chief of Gastroenterology and Nutrition Service at Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York. Colon cancer does not occur out of the clear blue sky. It starts from a small benign growth, the polyp. And about 1 in 20 of those small benign growths will grow gradually and transform into cancer. We know that that takes many years. This entire sequence is what we call the long, silent stage of colon cancer. During the long, silent stage, the cancerous polyps begin to grow from the inner lining of the colon into the wall of the intestine. If they are not removed, they can grow through the wall and spread to surrounding areas or via the bloodstream to distant organs. At that point, long-term survival is extremely low. But even James's brush with death was not immediately enough to motivate his wife, Lucille, to get checked. Like a lot of people, she's terrified of getting a cancer diagnosis. I am afraid. That if I go, you're afraid they're going to find something? I'm afraid. That they'll find something? Yes. But don't you think it's a good idea if they find something early? Truthfully, but I, I, like I said, I don't want to know about it. Lucille's fear is all too common. Nice shot. Whoa, whoa. Ed McCoy also avoided getting checked because of worry about having cancer and dread of undergoing any intimate screening procedures for colon cancer. Ed admits his fear caused him to ignore warning signs for nearly a year. A lot of this had to do with the era I grew up in. Nobody went to the hospital, the doctor. All my friends are the same thing. I mean, they're all the same way. They're all stubborn like that. Absolutely, you know, scared too. Experts say fear and ignorance lead to thousands of needless deaths every year. Like two because sure. colon cancer is almost always curable if caught early. One way to catch colon cancer in its earliest stages is to recognize the disease's warning signs, such as a change in bowel habits. If someone has a change in bowel habits to an increased frequency of bowel movements or to constipation, and if that's a real change for that person, and that change occurs in a very short period of time, the person should get a checkup. The colon, or large intestine, begins where the small intestine ends near the appendix. It passes up the right side of the abdomen, across the top, and down the left side, where it ends in areas known as the sigmoid and the rectum. When tumors develop in any part of the colon, the tumor blockage may result in changes in stool size and frequency. 
The tumor can also shed blood, which shows up in the stool. Ed dismissed both the changes in his bowel habits and his rectal bleeding. He thought the bleeding was caused by hemorrhoids. Yes! As weeks and months passed, Ed's rectal bleeding got heavier and more frequent, but he still refused to get checked. In the end, daughter Mary Lou provided a reason he could not disregard, namely her upcoming wedding. Come on, Dad. Ed's examinations proved that his bleeding was caused by cancer in his colon. It was a tumor, and it was cancerous, and it was in my rectum. And uh, the first thing I could think of was, well, what do we do now? Because Ed's cancer was low in his rectum, a few years ago, the only treatment would have been surgery to create a bag for collecting stool attached to an opening in the abdominal wall. It is called a colostomy, and it is what many colon cancer victims fear most. But Dr. Winauer says today, that worry is usually unnecessary. Surgical techniques have advanced so dramatically over the last few years that it's unusual for a patient. 19 people out of 20 who have a diagnosis of colon cancer will not need a colostomy. Okay, all right. Ed did not need one either. The surgery to remove yeah, the cancer right was successful. And he walked his daughter, Mary Lou, down the aisle as planned. But Ed paid a price for disregarding his symptoms for so long. His tumor had grown so large that he had to undergo both chemotherapy and radiation to shrink the tumor before surgery could be done. Show that expensive dental work, okay? Christine Pimentel Don't illustrates another important okay? fact about colon jump. cancer. It is Don't not just a man's it. disease. About half of all victims are women. And family history is also important. 5% of colon cancer victims have a genetic link to the disease from a first-degree relative like a mother or a brother. Hey, red, hey, white, come on. Good. This teacher and part-time cheerleading coach and her five siblings had no idea they were at special risk until Christine was diagnosed. My grandmother's death certificate reads carcinoma of the sigmoid colon. So it's very prevalent on the, my father's side of the family. Besides family history, Christine was also at increased risk for colon cancer because of ulcerative colitis, a chronic inflammation of the colon which requires daily medication. Even knowing that, Christine played Russian roulette with her health. She didn't go to the doctor and she stopped taking her medicine. Okay, get in. Right. Abdominal pain and frequent rectal bleeding finally forced Christine to the doctor and cancer was found. At age 42, she is much younger than the average colon cancer patient, but her family history and chronic colon disease doubled her risk. Carl. Hi, Doctor. Nice to meet you. That's why earlier this year she was at Boston Medical Center facing a complex surgery because her cancer was advanced. The cancerous polyps had not only developed throughout her colon, but they had also pushed through the colon wall itself. Led by Dr. James Becker, surgeon-in-chief of Boston Medical Center, the surgery required delicate reconstruction of her entire intestinal system. No mass lesion on the sigmoid. Christine is clear about one thing, that ignoring symptoms and avoiding the doctor could have cost her her life. As it is, her waiting means that her cancer was more advanced at the time of discovery, and she will have to undergo chemotherapy treatment. Now we're going to tack it in place to hold it here. Unlike Christine, most patients who develop colon cancer have no special risk factors. That's why Dr. Becker says that everyone starting at age 50 should at least have a yearly rectal exam. And he is upset that many doctors avoid doing them. You'd be surprised how even many physicians are sort of averse to doing a rectal exam on, on some patients, uh, skittish patients, for example. And that's a real shame because uh, it's so easy to pick up a tumor on a rectal exam. There is no debate about the value of regular screening, but there is some debate about which screening tests are best. Many experts recommend a yearly rectal exam and checking the stool for blood, plus periodic sigmoidoscopy, inserting a tube like this up the rectum to look at the last one-third of the colon. But there is increasing evidence that the best screening test may be colonoscopy, using a much longer tube like this simply because it allows the doctor to look at the entire length of the colon, not just the last one-third. The benefit of colonoscopy, of course, is that we can see directly the entire colon. We can look at polyps. We can identify them. We can remove them during the same examination. This is a, a little tiny raised area open right where I'm pointing there, and I'm going to just remove this. 
close. Okay. okay. During colonoscopy, the doctor examines the interior of the five to six foot long intestine, threading the scope inch by inch through the twists and turns of the colon. Physicians like Dr. Richard Whalen of New York's Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center are adept at locating even the smallest of polyps, as well as any other suspicious tissue. This is truly a revolutionary tool because it was not possible to, to uh, examine this or see this except by going to surgery. Colonoscopy patients undergo light sedation, so they are comfortable during the exam, which usually takes about 20 minutes. Dr. Whalen knows that this test is embarrassing for some patients, so he often eases the tension with comic banter. Arnold Schwarzenegger, I can see the polyp. I can almost get it. It's right there. I can't reach it. Given that today's screening tests can identify most colon cancers in the earliest curable stages, experts are frustrated that there are still so many deaths from this disease. Is it too dramatic for me to say that every death from colon cancer is a tragedy because if it had been detected early, that person could have been cured? It really is a tragedy because of the number of patients I see on a day-to-day -day basis in my practice who come in with advanced colon cancer who cannot be cured. We can detect the vast majority early and save lives. But the best evangelists for early detection are colon cancer survivors themselves. Number 24. Eric Davis. Eric Davis returned to the Baltimore Orioles baseball field having endured surgery and still undergoing chemotherapy, but very grateful for a second chance at life. This is really important. Dr. Tim feels very strongly that everybody over the age of 50 should get a yearly rectal exam, but he also feels it's important to get a colonoscopic exam sometime soon after age 50. That's the test that lets your doctor look at the entire colon and not just the lower third. Yeah, it is more expensive, but it's more thorough. For more about the story, visit our website at abcnews.com. Uh, when we come back now, fireworks over Tiananmen Square. China's President Jiang Zemin tells the American people he has no regrets about what happened, and I'll tell you what he told me about that massacre after this. Hey, how about replacing your fridge with one that's a little less, uh... Bell luxury minivan that provides buyers with comfortable room for seven passengers, practical and versatile cargo room, outstanding safety features, advanced technological features, all in two complete packages that represent an outstanding value. Potential Silhouette customers will also be shopping a wide variety of competitors, which typically will include Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager, Mercury Villager, plus Ford Windstar and Aerostar. Voice of the customer data tells us that Silhouette prospects demand that their minivan must provide comfortable, versatile seating for at least six passengers, offer the latest safety technology, plus provide a long list of advanced technological features. Okay, now that you know what's important to minivan intenders, let's take a look at how you can organize your selective walk-around presentation to best match these very specific buyer needs. <laughs> First on the list, versatile seating, and you've got plenty of Silhouette features to talk about. Starting with Silhouette's comfortable standard seven passenger seating with five rear modular seats. The Silhouette Series 1 is trimmed in Montego textured woven pile cloth, while the Silhouette Series 2 features standard perforated Sierra grain leather seat trim, which includes a stylish leather wrap steering wheel. The modular seats weigh only 34 pounds each and can be arranged in several configurations for maximum flexibility. The rear seats can also be quickly removed in order to take full advantage of Silhouette's generous 112.6 cubic feet of cargo capacity. You'll also want to talk about the added comfort and convenience of standard front seat recliners and an eight-way power driver's seat, which is standard on Series 1 and Series 2. Also, be sure to review the ease of walkthrough between the first and second row of seats, an especially important concern of minivan buyers. 
And finally, versatile seating also means safe seating. So make sure you mention the fact that all six outboard seats provide the added safety of a three-point seat belt. For buyers with small children, you'll also want to review the added comfort and safety of Silhouette's integrated child seat, available in single or dual configurations for the second row of seats. As we stated earlier, another key consideration for Silhouette prospects is advanced safety technology. So be sure to mention great Silhouette safety features like the outstanding crashworthiness and occupant protection provided by the combination of Silhouette steel space frame construction with fully integrated safety cage and steel side guard door beams. Standard anti-lock brakes for added steerability and control, especially on slippery surfaces. Standard driver's side airbag for increased driver crash protection. As always, even with the added protection of an airbag, buyers should always continue to wear their safety belts. Another great silhouette safety feature that your prospects are sure to appreciate are these standard programmable automatic power door locks. This feature automatically locks silhouette's doors when the gear shift is taken out of park and automatically unlocks the doors when the gear shift is returned to park. This system may also be reprogrammed with silhouette standard remote keyless entry transmitters, depending on customer preference. Of course, customers will have to first engage Silhouette's standard brake transmission shift interlock before shifting out of park. This feature is especially important to buyers with small children as it safeguards against unwanted shifting. Please refer to a Silhouette owner's manual for complete details on programmable automatic power door locks. Plus, there's also a standard sliding door child security door lock that can be set to prevent unintended opening of the sliding door from inside. And finally, the third important consideration for Silhouette intenders is that their minivan must provide a long list of advanced innovative technology. Naturally, you'll want to talk about innovative Silhouette technology like the Silhouette Series 2's standard power sliding door that provides owners with maximum convenience and safety. In addition to the remote keyless entry transmitter, the door is operated by a switch on the B-pillar or the overhead console or by using an inside or outside door handle. The power sliding door, which can be set for power or manual operation, works similarly to an automatic garage door opener. For optimum safety, the door will automatically reverse its direction if it detects an obstruction in its path. Silhouette's power sliding door is a GM industry exclusive and earned Oldsmobile the Technology of the Year Award from Popular Science Magazine. This great feature is standard on the Series 2 Silhouette and available on Series 1. The use of sheet molded composite materials on all major body panels, which resist dents and dings and will never rust, also underscores Silhouette's innovative technology. As does a special etch resistant clear coat finish on Silhouette's roof, meaning it will resist the harmful effects of acid rain and other environmental fallout. There's also a standard solar treated windshield that reduces ultraviolet rays by 50% and visible light by 60% while keeping the interior approximately 30% cooler and protecting interior trim and fabrics against sun fading and cracking. Under the hood, you'll want to discuss Silhouette's new 3400 SFI V6 engine that provides 180 horsepower, 205 pounds-feet of torque, and estimated fuel economy ratings of 19 miles per gallon city and 26 miles per gallon highway. You'll also want to mention the numerous innovations built into this great V6 that we discussed earlier. Silhouette's refined four-speed electronic shift automatic transmission is paired to the 3400 SFI V6 engine and provides extremely smooth shifts and outstanding reliability. You'll also want to review other advanced Silhouette technology like a touring suspension package that includes P205-70R15 touring tires for improved handling characteristics, electronic load leveling for even load distribution and level headlight aim, plus a unique air inflation kit including a 20-foot hose with a built-in gauge and a nozzle kit for conveniently filling tires and accessories. A final advanced technology feature you'll want to review is Silhouette's standard stainless steel exhaust system, providing maximum durability for extended life. Inside Silhouette, you'll want to talk about advanced technology features like an available auxiliary rear air conditioner that increases comfort for backseat passengers and includes a separate control in the middle row behind the driver's seat. This system provides maximum cooling power and is recommended for owners in hot climates. Another high-tech feature you'll want to talk about with Silhouette buyers are these steering wheel touch controls 
that provide exceptional convenience and fingertip access to Silhouette sound system. This great feature is standard on the Silhouette Series 2. And the advanced technology of Silhouette's overhead console, which provides three storage compartments and includes an integrated temperature and compass readout. Silhouette's keyless remote entry transmitters are another leading technological feature that is bound to impress buyers. This feature unlocks and locks Silhouette's doors, activates the illuminated entry feature, and unlocks Silhouette's lift gate from up to 30 feet away. Advanced technology also means listening enjoyment. The Silhouette Series 1 and Series 2 deliver with a standard AM-FM stereo with auto-reverse cassette player. An AM-FM stereo with a compact disc player is available on both models. And those are the highlights for the 1996 Oldsmobile Silhouette lineup. Advanced luxury minivans that provide buyers with comfortable room for seven passengers, generous and versatile cargo room, exceptional safety features, advanced technology features, all in a completely packaged price that represents outstanding value. As always, you'll want to tailor your walk-around product presentation to match the preferred needs of your Silhouette prospects to help maximize your success. On behalf of Oldsmobile, I'm John Davis. Thanks for watching.